Let's talk about the iPhone problem. Build products that we think are really wonderful and that people might want. And, and uh, sometimes we're right and sometimes we're wrong. Um, but I, I think we're going to hit a grand slam with this. The first iPhone was not the first phone to ever be released. It wasn't the first smartphone really to ever be released, but it was the best version of a phone that we had ever seen at the time. And back then, in 2007, consumer technology was rapidly changing. Each year you saw huge, noticeable advancements, not just minor, minute changes, but really big, massive changes because it was so new. Laptops look like this, phones look like this, the economic collapse had just begun, and Apple was about to release a product that would change the world. The 2007 Apple event is almost fable at this point. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. With that iconic line, Apple set out to disrupt an entirely new market like they had done with music and like they had done with personal computing. This was an entirely new territory, but one Apple would dominate for years and still pretty much continues to dominate in certain parts of the country. We got the first look today at what Apple says is the next big thing. There is a major breakthrough headed to American consumers. It's the iPhone. This is what everybody is talking about, the iPhone from Apple. Each year they released a new phone and each year the changes were massive, mainly because this was a new category of technology and they were just sort of figuring out what these new devices that they had invented could do and the world was starting to catch up with them as well. So these changes you saw each year were massive and each year Apple changed the game for their company, whether it was a faster SOC, a better camera, introducing a voice assistant, whatever it was, every single time Apple released a new product, it literally changed the way we look at smartphones. For nine years, they successfully released a smartphone that really gave people a reason to upgrade, that made people want to switch and want to spend the extra money to get the next best Thing. Then the iPhone 6S was released. So the 6S and 6S Plus look a lot like the previous phones. Now I know it might be a little bit hard to tell the difference between the 6 and the 6S. It's so similar to an iPhone 6. To be fair, there were some slight improvements internally. Externally, you couldn't really see much. They added 4K video shooting and some type of slow motion, but essentially nothing really changed from the iPhone 6 to the iPhone 6S and nothing made you want to go out and buy it. And then the iPhone 7 was released. We removed the headphone jack, and that's all. But the biggest change, no more headphone jack. Earlier today, Apple fans were blindsided by a terrible announcement. The new iPhone 7 won't have traditional headphone jacks. Another year, another iPhone launch. But this year's global launch was a bit sour for some fans. No headphone jack. Yeah, no headphone jack in the iPhone 7. And Apple's long history of tech decisions, removing the headphone jack from the iPhone 7 might be their most indefensible yet. Since then, the criticisms of Apple and the iPhone have immeasurably gotten more and more critical and more and more unfair, if we're being honest. Some blame Tim Cook for just trying to make money. Some blame the loss of Steve Jobs. I think all of these are baseless. My personal opinion is that when you revolutionize an industry, it moves on and goes super far and there's only so much you can do in one industry. Look at the music industry. Apple changed the music industry, but nothing has really changed in the last 10 to 15 years since they changed it. All you do is stream the music now instead of actually buying the songs, but basically everything is the same. Then the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus were released. And it was pretty disappointing until the iPhone 10 was released. Thank you. Thank you. This is iPhone 10. You can even see in the faces of the audience in that video that they're not excited about the iPhone 10. They don't really care about it. It's just something they already knew about. 
whether it's because the jump year over year is becoming smaller and smaller, or the fact that the iPhone 10 was leaked for two years before it was actually released, the audience looked disappointed, and I think the entire world was kind of disappointed. Two years later, and we are still in the same boat. Apple has released essentially two of the exact same smartphones for the last two years, three if you counted the iPhone 10, and they just sort of wrap it in new marketing terminology, whether it's a better SOC, one billion what, microns, what are those things called? Whatever, one billion things. A better camera, slow-mo selfies, I'm not saying that word, but consumers are really starting to notice, especially people in my life, and I know people just in general are starting to notice that the jump from the 2017 phone to the 2018 phone to the 2019 phone, they're all pretty minimal and they're all almost non-existent. People like my mom, sister, dad, and brother, they're somebody who sort of always wanted the new iPhone because there's always a new feature that they wanted and it it was cool. It was I wanted the 4S because of Siri and I wanted the 5S because of the Touch ID and I wanted the 6 because of the bigger phone. But now they all use phones that are at least two years old at this point and they could buy new ones if they wanted to. They just choose not to because they don't see any point or any advantage in purchasing a newer smartphone. So what's the solution? I don't know if there is one. A two year cycle is something I've tossed around in my brain. I think that that's dumb. I think that Apple would never do that because they can make up enough new features to put into a phone to justify releasing it. I don't think that the year to year upgrades are worth it. I think the two year to three year upgrades are really where you start to see some pretty big improvements, but even then, not the most necessary improvements. I also thought about a full device redesign instead of the four year cycle that Apple is on between the six and the eight, and now the 10 and the 11 Pro eventually going to probably be the 12, where they keep the same outer shell design for four years. It would be interesting to see Apple go to maybe a one year design change or a two year design change cycle. I'm not sure if that would make sense though because Apple clearly knows what they're doing and brand awareness is really big and important with Apple. When you look at an iPhone, you know it's an iPhone and changing it up every two years wouldn't make a ton of sense. And I think that is the problem, is that there is no solution to this problem of each year the next phone is just becoming not worse and worse but it's a law of diminishing returns. It, it's increasing at a decreasing rate. Whereas when they first started off, it was increasing at an increasing rate, which means that the phones year over year would be better and better and better and better. And each one would be more better than the last one, which was awesome. But now in 2019, that is just not the case. And I think back in 1997, at Macworld, Larry Ellison said it best. In a sense, Apple is trying, trying to do too many different things. We need to focus on a handful of things and do them really, really well. You know, Apple's the only lifestyle brand in the computer industry. It's the only company that people feel passionate about. And in trying to keep up this lifestyle, Apple has trapped themselves by trying to make each new phone release feel special, feel like you need to buy it. It's almost impossible to market that well and to keep up that sort of lifestyle if the improvements just aren't really there. The improvements are really on the software side with Apple now and just not on the hardware side and their software runs on every phone essentially. And I'm worried that in five years, the only way we'll be able to distinguish between one phone and the other is the logo on the back. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Hit subscribe if you like this video. Peace out.